welcome to Atlantic Mechanical. Today we are going to be doing Zoom Lock training. This training is uh, courtesy of Mr. Dana George from the Parker Hannafin Company, a division of Swollen. Uh, Dana, it's all yours. All right. First of all, thanks this morning for inviting me in to do the uh, Zoom Lock training. Um, really, the key with Zoom Lock is making sure that you're trained on it prior to using it. Um, has anybody in here used Zoom Lock in their prior in the past? Right? How's it worked out for you? Um, we did it once or twice. Yeah. And then the main thing, main thing is, and, and if and again, um, the main thing is 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 two preparation, right? And I'll go over, it up. I'll go over that with you. And there's a few things to look for. And then because of, um, and then at the end of my training, I always uh, relate or or share with you. Uh, issues um, that that may cause that may cause those like sm small leaks. So, um, so does everybody have this uh, Zoom Lock submittal package? Mm -hmm. okay. yep. So I'm gonna when I do the training, I go over the specifications of the Zoom Lock, and then I go over the ins installation process. And then everybody should have in here as far as the key steps with the Zoom Lock, as far as making sure that it works properly. It's the five steps to prep. And then if you turn the sheet around on the back, as far as, and, and, and more importantly, uh, the, the two key steps to make it sure that the zoom lock fittings are installed properly uh, so that you get that 700 PSI rating. So there's a couple tools you need to, need to use. One is the depth gauge and one is the crimp gauge. And I'll, and I'll, I'll go over that during my installation process. But, Let's first start by, if you look at the, at the Zoom Lock specifications, if you turn to page five on here, here's the, here's the Zoom Lock specs. So the, the, the first thing I want to point out is if you look at approved refrigerants, right? You guys still do, you guys do a lot of service, correct? Yes. Too much. Right? Too much. <laughs> so if you look at the approved refrigerants, what refrigerant don't you see on the list with the with the standard zoom lock fitting? 717. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no ammonia, right? Because the copper is not compatible with the ammonia. So you're you're right, right? So no no ammonia. But what's what's the other one? No 22, right? Really? No no 22. And why do you think no R22 with the steering? We're trying to get rid of it. Mineral oil. No, that, that's the, people think the mineral oil. If you look down here, zoom lock fittings are compatible with the mineral oil, it's compatible with the PVE oil, which is in your ductless splits, and it's compatible with the uh, POE oil, you know, with the 404s, the 507s, and the, the newer refrigerants like the 448 and 449. Uh, it's because of the chlorine in the refrigerant. So R22 being an HCFC, the chlorine is not compatible with the with the with the HNBR O-ring that's that's in the zoom lock fitting. So does it eat it away? Well, yeah, it's not the it's not the ideal O-ring uh, for the for the chlorine refrigerants. Now, we do make three eighths, three quarter, and seven eighths couplings for R22 that that have a neoprene O-ring in it. So it's a different O-ring. So if you need an R22 fitting. Again, we have three H, three quarter, and seven H, and that's what we came up with. That it's basically about, about for five residential days. air conditioning. That's um, what you got. Yeah, for on the on the AC side, and when we came out with those fittings, that was during the whole, uh, you know, when people were converting. Um, you know, when you had the uh, dry R twenty two units, what was that like five years ago? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so you have an R, a dry R twenty two unit, uh, but. What we found is we were planning on contractors using those couplings to swap out those units, but what happened around that time is the R22 pricing went up to, shoot, I think it was like almost $700 for a 30-pounder. So the new R22 dry units had POE oil in them, so contractors would just you put in 407C rather than put in the 22. So we haven't sold uh, very many of those, of, of, those, of those couplings, so that's why those three sizes are still only available uh, today. So, but it's a chlorine in the refrigerant. It's not the it's not the uh, oil issue, all right? So no no 22, no two, yeah, I know you guys do refrigeration, right? No R12, no no 502, um, no four. You still run into 408A, uh, yeah, yeah, right? No 408 <laughs> <laughs> right? No 408A, no 409A. You know why? 
all HCFCs. Yeah. Right, because R two R four oh eight A for R four oh nine A there's a lot of R twenty two in it. So but so if so here are the approved refrigerants. Um, if, if you're working on a system and the refrigerant is not on this list and you have a question, you know, give Ed a call, give me a call, we can get I can usually get a pretty pretty quick answer. All right. So uh, so if you look at application high pressure air conditioning refrigeration, you can also use it with glycol and non-potable water. Okay, uh, it's not coated for drink drinking water, so you can't use it with drinking water. And then plus, um, um, yeah. So, but if you're using a drain line, you know, on a Friday afternoon or something, you can certainly use a you know a, a zoom lock fitting on on drain lines, and you can use it with, with glycol. All right. Uh, then if you look at the continuous operating temperature, it's 250. The O-ring temperature range is minus 40 to 300. Um, so you guys do a lot of freezer work, right? So it's, it's okay down to as long as you're above that minus 40. And then once the zoom lock fitting is pressed, <coughs> and once you check it with the crimp gauge, which I'll go over, the zoom lock fitting is rated for 700 PSI, okay? And we have a burst pressure down here of, of 2100 psi and 2100 psi is on, uh, burst pressure is on the inch and three eighths on inch and an eighth and below burst pressure is over, is over 3000 psi right but again I'll, I'll I'll get into you know after you after you press it you used to make you, you need to use the crimp gauge to make sure that you check it to make sure it's rated for those pressures and then also while I'm thinking of it the inch and three fitting is the only one you have to press it twice to get that UL rating. So inch and three, you would press the fitting once, and then you would rotate the tool 45 to 95, uh, 45 to 90 degrees, and then you would press it a second time. But that's in, in, in this K-1 catalog. Um, we we go over the installation process. So if you look at page 18 and 19. Okay, you see step 14 applies to the inch and three fitting only. Crimp the inch and three eighths fitting twice. Rotate, crimp the tool 45 to 90 degrees after the first crimp and repeat the crimp. So again, that's that's only on the inch and three that you need, you need to do that. All right? Um, we, we make um, fittings quarter up to inch and three. Inches, inch and three is the largest set that we go to today. We're working on inch and five and two and one. Um, I mentioned inch of the uh, HNDR O-ring. Um, it's strictly a copper to copper connection. I've been asking you to do copper to stainless steel or copper to aluminum. The answer is no, strictly copper to copper. And then this is important here. Uh, approved tubing tolerances must meet the ASTM B280 standards, okay? That's critical because I've seen some tubing out there um, that did not meet those those standards, and they created an, an issue with the uh, zoom lock. Here I have a piece of tubing that came off of a line set, and I'll pass it around when I go over the go over the installation process. But it was a pre-insulated line set, and the in the machine that they used to pull the insulation over the tubing created a, a deep scratch that, 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 that runs all, all along the whole length of the, of the, of the pipe. So I mean, if, if you have that on there, one of, the, one of the steps is when you prep it, you have to make sure that you inspect it to make sure that there's no deep scratching or etching on, on the pipe. So if you had a piece of pipe like this, um, it, it, it doesn't meet those standards. Is that soft drum? This is, so, yeah, this is, you can this use is, it on soft drum? you can use it on, on, on soft drum tubing. But actually, I'll, pa I'll pass this around, you'll, you'll see that that deep scratch that, that runs the whole length of the pipe, and, and that, that, that could create an, an issue with, with, the, uh, with the zoom lock. And then the other thing, too, is you can almost see like a, a, a zipper line on, on the pipe a, as well that could, that could create an issue. So I'll pass, pass that around. And then um, I mentioned approved oils, mineral, POE, PVE, or, or the PEG oil, strictly copper to copper. Uh, you can use it with the with our the, the new 19 kilonewton tool um, if you need to uh, bury refrigerant tubing underground. You need to use the K copper, right? So the the 19 kilonewton tool you can use the, the thicker wall K copper even up to inch and three eighths. And then here you can use hard copper or soft rod copper. 
Now the challenge with some of the softer on copper, especially on the larger sizes, right? You 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 unroll it, right? Some of it's oval, right? So you want to make sure that make, make sure it, it it it's round. Now one thing that you can use, um, you know, if you have the uh, a zoom lock zoom lock fitting, you can use uh, a couple different things to to lubricate the O-ring. In in the our installation process, we say. Probably the best thing is refrigerant oil, right? Refrigerant oil that's in the system. But we also say you can use nylog glue, and then Parker makes a Parker O lube. So if you have larger size soft drum tubing, it probably wouldn't hurt to put lubricate that O ring to help, you know, when you slide it in so that you're not going to roll out that, that O ring or, or damage it. And then um, down the bottom here, we have all the agent, agency approvals and, and the certifications. So that's that's the spec on the ZoomLock product. And then if you look if you look here, the products that are available, we have couplings, we have slip couplings, we have long radius elbows. If you look, all of our elbows are long radius, so we follow refrigeration piping practice 101. You, you know, you want to minimize pressure drop in the liquid line, minimize pressure drop in, in the suction line. So they are long radius. We have T's, we have reducers, we have caps, uh, we have the pre-made flares. Do we have a flare in here? Yeah. So we so for the so the ductless splits, you know, we've got the, the uh, pre-made flare adapters. Are they 410 rated flares? Those are 410 rated flares, yep. Okay. Um, we have the reducing bushings, long radius street elbows, 45s. And then we do have the Ys for your, your uh, VRF equipment. And the Ys do come with the uh, insulation. And then for your refrigeration projects, we do have P-traps. And then we also, we, we now have filter dryers. We have spool and filter dryers, sight glasses, ball valves, and solenoid valves that are zoom lock compatible. Okay, and basically, when you get the component, the the, the uh, spool component, the connections are not going to be switched out. So it's going to come out like a straight piece of pipe, and then you would need two couplings to make that to make that connection. Right? And then our ball, our ball valves are full plug ball valves, and they have the, the tap on them. So, uh, so any 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 questions? Um, I actually had a question. How hot can those O-rings get? Continuous temperature is is two two fifty. Okay. All right. And then I mean that should be the only question I get asked is uh, on you know on a, on a compressor replacement. I know um, you know like Copeland rec says that if if six inches from the discharge of the compressor, if it's above two hundred and twenty five degrees, then your superheat's too high. Then you got to you. you you need to, uh, you know, correct it. Make sure the condensers are clean. You know, make sure that your evaporator superheat is 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 cool enough so you're not going to overheat that compressor. So even on even on the on the discharge, you know, you should be you should be below that 250. Uh, but to take continuous operating temperature of the O-ring is 250 degrees. Uh, so now, if you turn to page. 18 and 19, here's the installation process. And then also we have it here in the five steps of the prep. So, so really the key with the zoom lock is uh, one of the mistakes that ha has been made is uh, I think contractors see this type of technology and they say, oh, I know what that is. It's similar to the, you know, similar to the, the, the pro press on the water side. But why do you think why do you think the tube prep on the zoom lock fitting needs to be more thorough than on the water water side? Because water never exceeds 100 psi. That's we that's one that's one factor. So water inside the pipe has a, has a lower pressure. High water pressure, you're right, is 100 psi. If you have a dirty condenser in a 410A system, what can your liquid line pressure be? Like over 450. Yeah. Yeah, could could even get up to 500, right? So that's one factor, the higher pressure, and the other factor is the smaller molecules of the refrigerant. A water molecule is larger than a refrigerant molecule. So if you have, say, 450 pounds of, of, of pressure inside the pipe, it wants to try to work its way up to zero PSI. So if there's any deep scratches or, or etching on that pipe, it wants to try to work its way between the pipe and the fitting, or try to work its way past the O-ring to get up to zero PSI. So 
reason why you need to follow the five steps to prep is the higher pressures in the pipe and the smaller molecules of the, of the refrigerant. So if you look at the, at the two prep, right, we, with the, with the um, 19 kilonewton tool and the five jaw set, in, in your kit you'll get a tubing cutter, right? Why do you think we put a tubing cutter in the kit? You don't want us to use a hacksaw. Right, right. We don't want you to use a hacksaw. We don't want you to use a sawzall. So we put a tubing cutter in the kit because we want you to use a tubing cutter. Nothing special about it. Just make sure the wheel is sharp. Make sure when you cut it, it doesn't thread on you. So tubing cut, put the tubing, uh, tubing cutter in the, in the kit. Uh, we have a deburring tool. Right? It's, a good, it's a good deburring tool, small teeth. It's not the razor blade type. So there's a deburring tool in there. And then we have the depth gauge. We have the crimp gauge, and then we have the uh, scotch brite pad, which you need to, to, to prep the pipe properly, and then we've got the Sharpie, right? And this is, and again, the key to safety is using your gauge, is using your gauges, the depth gauge and the crimp gauge, which I'll show you in a minute. So, as far as the installation process, right? Cut, cut the pipe with the tubing cutter, deburr it, right? So deburr the inside, deburr the outside, right? Especially the outside. If, that's, if there's a burr on there, what do you think would happen to the to the O-ring? You tear it. You can nick or damage it or, 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 or tear it. So after you deburr it, here's the scotch bright pad, and then you need to just prep the outside. And then when I prep the outside, I always put a little bit of pressure right on that right on that corner. So even if there's still a little bit of a burr there, you gotta, you gotta knock it off. So. What about abrasive cloth, just regular sandpaper? Uh, like a, if you have a scratch on there, right, that doesn't remove with the scotch brite, then take, take like a 180 grit sand cloth, and then sand it, but I'd always finish it up with this because it's a, it's a finer grit, right? So, once you prep it, right, now the next step is you need to inspect for, for any deep scratches or etching, right? So this, this looks good. So from here, you put it into the depth gauge, and then you mark it. And the reason why you need to do, you, you need to mark it is when you push that pipe into the fitting, right, if that backs out, you won't know it unless you mark it, right? And then why it's critical on the safety side is what gives the zoom lock fitting its strength is it, if you see that dome between the two crimp areas, that's what gives it its strength of on uh, the inch and eighth and below of over 3,000 PSI for the burst pressure. And if that backs out to the point, if you don't mark it, if that backs out to the point there's only one crimp band on it, you think that's rated for 700 PSI? Uh -huh. Nope. Right? So safety-wise, it's important to make sure that you, that you mark it so that when you press it, you want to make sure it's inserted in all the way. And then, so that's inserted in all the way. So here's our, our tool, right? And so this is a half-inch fitting. To change the jaw, just push in the pin, quarter turn counterclockwise, put in the proper size jaw, and then just push it in. And then where the where the fitting is installed in the jaw is different than the other manufacturers. Has anybody done a press on the on the water side? Yes. Right? Where do you put the O-ring? Right in the center. Right in the center. Right? Ours is not designed that way. Ours is designed so that the O-ring sits on the outside groove. So it either fits in like this or like that. You see it? If the O-ring goes in the center, it doesn't fit in there properly. And that's one major mistake that I've seen contractors make because, you know, on the water side, you know, it's almost like muscle memory. They've done, they've done so many that I'll show up on a job and half of them are done with, with the O-ring pressed in the, in the middle. And what happens there is the O-ring is crimped, that O-ring is pressed and, and, it, and, it, and it'll leak. So, does everybody see that on, on how this front, as far as how it sits into the job? Right? Yeah. Either like this or like that, it does not go in the center, okay? So after you position it in the jaw, I'm gonna hold down, hold down the button. It's gonna go, it's gonna, it's gonna press, and you should always see the tips of the jaw touch. It's gonna shut off and then retract, so, right? Right, 
draws touch and you hear that and it, and it releases. And then the last thing you need to do, this is the crimp gauge. The last thing you need to do is take the crimp gauge and just put it over that crimp band to make sure that it presses it all the way. And then after you put it over the crimp band, put an X on there. So now if, if you have an, an, an issue, you know, you, say if you have some fittings that leak or you want me to check it out, we look for, we see that mark so we know it's inserted in far enough and we know that you checked it with the crimp band. So now we know that's rated for, for 700 PSI, all right? Um, any, any questions on that? If you, if you start to make a, if you start to make a press, There is a, I call it a do-over button, right? The jaws start to lock. You can retract the jaws, so you can release it, and then you know you can fix whatever you whatever you need to fix. For so, oh, for some reason, if you if you press it and the crimp gauge does not go over the the crimp area, all you need to do is put it back into the jaw and repress it. Repress it until that crimp gauge fits over fits over the um, crimp band. Right? The zoom lock fit, fitting, the press is concentric, so you don't have to worry about lining up the jaws. So just put it back in and then repress it until until it passes with the with the crimp band. Um, a trick on some of the larger sizes, like inch and one, inch and three. Sometimes after you after you make the press. It, 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 the fitting is hard to release from the jaw. Sometimes you almost need like a persuader and you have to really hit it hard to release it. What you can do in that scenario, just take some WD-40 and spray it inside the jaw and that helps pop the fitting free after you, after you, make, the, after you make the press. Right? Um, so that's why we get into you know, five steps to prep to prevent leaks, right? Is cut the pipe, deburr it. Uh, use the scotch bright pad to, to prepare the outside of the tubing. Make sure you inspect, make sure you remove any deep scratches or etching. All right? And then for safety, please, please, please use your depth gauge and use your crimp gauge. The last thing we want is somebody getting hurt because they didn't use the depth gauge and the crimp gauge and they didn't follow, follow our, our process because, shoot, it's uh, dealing with high, high, pressure, high pressure refrigerant, so it's important to follow those, the uh, process. Um, so now I want to just relay any issue, any any um, leak issues I've seen with with, with the with the zoom lock over the years. Uh, the main thing is it's the two uh, preparation. So if you look down here at number number four, right, is inspect, right, inspect. Tubing must be sanded and cleaned. You've provided heavy-duty abrasive pad, nylon mesh abrasive pad, maroon color, or 180 grit sandpaper. Sand tube and, and a radial, right? So sand it radial to the to the tubing. All right. Uh, so after you do that, inspect it. Uh, it says inspect for visible scratches and incise marks. You know what incise marks are on tubing? On a, on a piece of tubing. On hard drawn tubing, I should say, on hard drawn tubing, it's identified. It's not inked on there, ACR type L. It's actually etched on there, like A C R type L, and you can feel it with your with your fingernails, right? It's pretty it's pretty thick, and if that O ring sits right over that, that's a potential for a leak. So if you have that that tubing, you have to cut it back. So that, that I've seen I've seen that, right? Um, because again, higher pressure, smaller molecules, it wants to try to push its way out. So you have to be cautious of that etching, not prepping the tubing. Uh, I've seen um, there is a, a O ring on the zoom lock fitting. So I've seen a job where the zoom lock fittings were in a five gallon bucket, right? And then the sheet rock that was there and the sheet rock dust was, was, was going in the fitting. So you want to make sure that you keep the fittings clean, keep them in the box or uh, put them in a, in a parts tray. You guys sell what, Milwaukee parts tray? Put them in a parts tray. Um, I've seen fittings that were overheated, right? So zoom lock helps, it's not going to eliminate brazing, but it's going to help, help reduce brazing. So if you need to braze, 
say if you need to raise a stub on a service valve on the suction on the on the suction service valve or a liquid line service valve, we do have minimum brazing distances. So if you look on page 21, just as an example, for 7 eighths, we want you to leave 9 inches from the zoom lock fitting to the to the braze joint. Uh, 5 eighths, we want you to, you, you to use uh, leave 7 inches from the from the where you're brazing to the zoom lock fitting. And just like when you braze in a, a swollen expansion valve, if you need to if you need to braze, right, this is 7 eighths, leave 9 inches, point the flame away from the fitting, I'd still put a wet rag around it. Again, just like brazing in a, a, a swollen expansion valve. So just be cautious. And we do know um, if, if a fitting has been overheated, what we do is when we get the fitting back, if we take the O-ring and if we cut it, that O-ring should stay round. If we cut it and it flattens out, it's been compromised by it. It's been compromised by heat. So I've seen I've seen that um, etching on the pipe. Um, I've seen. I saw one one. It was a flare fitting on a project where the O-ring was missing. I'm not sure how that happened, but if you're sliding that pipe into the fitting, you should kind of get a feel how it goes in. So if it goes in, it's a little bit sloppy. Just back it out. Make sure that that O-ring is is. Uh, is in there. If it's not, then just put it aside and then, and then bring it back. Um, but or not that. bring it back. Or not bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm not sure how, how that would happen. Or, like we mentioned, we were talking about soft drawn tubing. If it's soft drawn tubing, right, and you're, you're putting it in and you're fighting it, you know, just kind of back it up. Make sure that that, that O ring is still seated in there. Maybe you, you might be, you know, rolling, rolling it out. So, but once you, once you start using it, you kind of get it, you get a feel for it. Um, so that's basic. That's basically the, the main thing with zoom lock. Safety wise, use your crimp gauge, use your depth gauge. Then, as far as the installation process, you know, you just need to spend a little bit more time prepping the tubing um, th than you do on the on the water side because of the higher pressures of the refrigerant and the smaller molecules of the of the refrigerant. So, any 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 questions? Good. I've got some. I've got some fittings up here. So if you want to, if you want to, if you want to try, you know, uh, uh, do a do a do a fitting and do a press. You know, please come up and 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 and, and we can go over it together. But uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, that will conclude today's training session on Zoom Lock Fittings. Again, we'd like to thank Mr. Dana George from Parker Hannafin, Division of Small & Company, and also Ed Mattis from FW Webb for sponsoring this training. Thank you.